Hello and welcome to this quick presentation on filters. Filters are used in vibration analysis and inside the data collector in a lot of different ways. And it may be a term that you've heard from time to time dealing with your analyzer and just wondered what it really meant and what it did. So I just thought let's take a quick presentation to explore that topic. Basically there are four types of filters. There's a low pass filter which allows frequencies below a certain cutoff frequency to go through and higher frequencies to get cut out. There's a band pass filter which allows frequencies within a band so you specify the upper and lower limit any vibration frequencies within that limit go through and the others are rejected. A band stop, we don't use them in uh, vibration analysis to my knowledge, but it says, well, with uh, everything lower than a cutoff let through, anything above a cutoff let through, but uh, block out everything um, in between. And finally, high pass filters, um, everything uh, above a certain frequency limit is allowed to go through and everything below is cut out. Um, I'm going to just demonstrate um, some uh, filters in action. Just make sure we bring up the right one here. Now what I've got is this, this software uh, lets me play the sound of a machine. You can hear it there, and we're looking at, it looks like a graphic equalizer, doesn't it? It's just a spectrum, really, just a spectrum, but what we're seeing on the screen is just the vibration at different frequencies in a log format to make it a bit more obvious. And I can choose different s sources of vibration. Boy, that's loud. So just different sources of vibration we can see. Now I'm going to use that example because we've got good vibration across all the frequencies. And what I'm going to do is turn on different filters and you will see how the vibration uh, at some frequencies gets through and others does not. So let's go. First I'll turn on a low pass filter. So low pass, in this case I've set my cutoff frequency right here. Everything below it made it through. Now low pass doesn't necessarily mean that the frequency is low. I could set a low pass filter way up here and everything above it gets through and everything, sorry, is, is blocked and everything below it gets through. So, you know, we use low pass filters a lot in, uh, in vibration analysis. Let's have a look at a band pass. So my band pass, I've blocked that out and I've blocked that out and I've let that through. So for example, when we do set up your enveloping or demodulation or that sort of a bearing detection system, they may give you the option of a band pass filter. And all it means is you're trying to say, hey, I'm going to detect the point at which the vibration just in that band represents the bearing vibration and outside could be other vibration we're not interested in. In particular, all that low frequency vibration could be much higher in amplitude, could be. So let's quickly look at band stop. You can see I've blocked that and let the other go through. But more importantly, high pass. The high pass filter is letting all these high frequencies go through. And again, just as I mentioned with the low pass, a high pass filter may pass everything above a low frequency. For example, in your analyzer, you will have a high pass filter setting, which might be just 10 hertz, 15 hertz, and so on. And it's designed to basically allow all the vibration through of interest to us, but just block out the very low frequencies, which can be affected by the integration process. So the integration process will generate a lot of really low frequency vibration, so the high pass filter blocks that out. We also use high pass filters when we're looking at demodulation and enveloping. We allow all the bearing frequencies through and block out all the really high amplitude, uh, uh, low frequency signals. Anyway, I hope that's been useful. You can see that filters are used all the time. Internally there's an anti-aliasing process which uses filters. The integration process is use filters and the integration process itself is a 
type of filter. I won't go into any more detail than that. Uh, tracking filters, for example, when you're doing um, tests on, well, there's a lot of applications for tracking filters, but in particular, when you're looking at um, turbo machinery, uh, you filter out all the vibration other than the 1x vibration. So we just look at the 1x vibration, whatever that is, and that uses a tracking filter, just that the, the frequency characteristics change as the machine changes speed. And also, as I mentioned a few times, demodulation, peak view, acceleration enveloping, all those techniques also use filters. Anyway, I hope uh, you found this presentation useful.